Let's imagine we had a population of some species growing according to the discrete logistic equation. Here, p sub t is the number of individuals in time step t. r equals the low density growth rate. And m is the carrying capacity. Now let's say that this population is something like fish. And we want to harvest this population, say for food. We're interested in modeling how much we could harvest from this population. Let's say that in each time step, we harvest a certain fraction of the population. Let's denote this fraction by the parameter h. To add the effect of harvesting to our logistic equation, we just need to subtract off each time step the number of individuals harvested. So we subtract off h times p sub t. If h is the fraction we harvest, then h times p sub t is the number of individuals harvested each time step. You can think of h as equaling harvesting effort. If you don't put any effort in, then h is equal to zero and you won't get any harvest. On the other hand, if you put in an enormous effort, the population size is going to shrink a lot due to the subtracting this term off the equation. And if the population size shrinks too much, you won't harvest very much either. In fact, what if it dies all the way out? You'll have zero individuals. In that case, you might have a large harvest at the beginning, but you won't have a sustainable harvest. So what we want is a sustainable harvest. We want to maximize the sustainable harvest. If we harvest too much, we won't have a sustainable harvest. If we harvest too little, we won't get much harvest. So therefore, the maximal sustainable harvest probably occurs at some intermediate level of the harvesting effort. We want to determine this maximal sustainable harvest. To do this, we'll need to combine what we know about maximizing functions with what we know about discrete dynamical systems and finding equilibria. The reason equilibria will be important is because we want a sustainable harvest. So we want to look at the amount of harvest after the system has settled down into an equilibrium. To make this concrete, let's choose a specific set of parameters. Let's let the low density growth rate be 10%, 0.1. Let's also choose a value for the carrying capacity, m. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to set m equal to just 1. At first, that might seem silly. How could we have a population with a maximum population size of one individual? But we like to use 1 anyway because it makes the equation look simpler. If we do so, we need to reinterpret what p sub t means. In this case, the maximal value of p sub t, at least after a long time, would be 1. So p sub t couldn't be the number of individuals. Instead, maybe we could think of p sub t as being the fraction of individuals, the idea being fraction relative to carrying capacity. If p sub t is 1, we're at the carrying capacity, which we've set to 1. So in this case, our logistic equation with harvesting looks like p sub t plus 1 minus p sub t equals r, well that's 0 0.1, times p sub t times 1 minus p sub t over m, but m is just 1, so it's just 1 minus p sub t. And then we subtract off the harvesting h times p sub t. So here's what we want to do. We want to choose the harvesting effort h to maximize the harvest. And the harvest is h times p sub t. But we want this harvest to be sustainable, which means we must set p sub t to be an equilibrium. Once p sub t settles down to an equilibrium value, then h times this value, h times p sub t, will be the amount of the sustainable harvest, the number we're trying to maximize. To solve this problem, we'll take a couple steps. One, we need to calculate the equilibria. Of course, what is relevant is the stable equilibria. And we won't worry about it too much. 
but the idea is that the population size will go to the stable equilibrium. Turns out there'll be only one. The value of the equilibria will depend on h. If h is zero, we already know what will happen because it's a standard logistic equation. In that case, the non-zero equilibrium will be just the carrying capacity m, which is one here. But what we expect is that h gets larger, this equilibrium will get smaller and smaller, and eventually it might hit zero if we harvest too much. Then step two will be to calculate the harvest. The idea is that these equilibria are in terms of p, the population size. So we'll calculate the harvest. Well, that's not too difficult. That's just h times p sub t. But the idea is that p sub t will be the stable equilibrium. And lastly, we'll find the value of h that maximizes this sustainable harvest. That harvest being h times p sub t. Here's our equation again for logistic growth with growth rate 0.1, carrying capacity 1, and harvesting effort h. Let's find the equilibria. We'll plug in E for every value of P. So we get E minus E is 0 0.1 E times 1 minus E minus H times E. So the left hand side is 0. We can factor out an E from the right hand side. So we have E times the quantity 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 E minus H. This equation has two solutions. One is when E is equal to zero, and the other is when the other factor, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 E minus H is equal to zero. Hopefully we won't get stuck in this equilibrium zero, or we won't be harvesting anything. Let's see if this other equilibrium is positive. We can add 0 0.1 E to both sides and divide by 0 0.1 to calculate that E is 0 0.1 minus H over 0 0.1, which is 1 minus H divided by the low density growth rate, 0.1. Or we could write it as 1 minus 10H. So the equilibria are E equals 0, or E equals 1 minus 10H. At a minimum, we want this equilibrium here to be positive. If it's negative, that doesn't make a lot of sense. In that case, it wouldn't be a physical equilibrium. So we want 1 minus 10h to be greater than 0. We want 1 to be greater than 10h. Or in other words, h should be less than 1 tenth. And notice that this 1 tenth was the low density growth rate we put in. In order to have a positive equilibrium, we need to have the harvesting effort be less than the low density growth rate. That makes a whole lot of sense. We shouldn't harvest any faster than the population can reproduce. So in general, to have a positive equilibrium, we must have h less than r. If h is greater than r, or 0 0.1 in this case, the population will die out. The only realistic equilibrium left would be e equals 0. We've killed the population and so our long-term harvesting prospects are pretty bad. Of course, we need to know, is this equilibrium stable? To do that, we need to rewrite the dynamical system in function iteration form. So just add p sub t to both sides. If we call this function f of p sub t, what we're hoping is that the derivative f prime evaluated at the equilibrium E is less than 1. That's the criterion for E being stable. You can do this yourself, or you can look at the plot of F in the applet lower down on this page. 
but here's the conclusion. E equals 1 minus 10H is indeed stable. In fact, it's stable as long as H is less than 0 0.1, which is exactly the same criterion we need for this equilibrium to be positive. So we don't get an additional criterion. We basically just need to make sure that H is less than 0 0.1. For the non-zero equilibrium to be stable, we must have that the harvesting effort is less than the population growth rate. So we must have H less than R, or in our case, H less than 0 0.1. The same criterion we have for the equilibrium to be positive. And that criterion makes sense. We just shouldn't harvest any faster than the population is reproducing.